Not bad company there, and we've got lots of microphones on because not only is it Chris Ooh. Kerry in Soul, I was going to say Soul System, it's in fact called Sound System at uh, eight minutes past one. We've got Pete Agnew of a band called Nazareth, and he's the, the bass player, right? Hello. Hello. What a lovely voice he's got. And Dan McCavity. Good evening. I don't know whether many people know that Dan McCavity plays with Nazareth. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm sure they do. Oh, yes. Yeah. But he's, he's very pleased. He sings with them. That's <laughs> right, he sings with them, but he's also very famous. <laughs> For making his own songs as well. Right. You had a terrible time getting it, right? Oh, it was <laughs> wonderful. As we say in Scotland, murder for <laughs> Really? No, it was, I mean, it's an hour flight from London, right? It took us eight hours. That's right, because it was booked up for Easter. You had to go by trains well, and we boats. Got what they call the Luxembourg Express. God knows what the other one does. <laughs> That's the Express. Don't know what the slow one does. Oh, you came in the fast one, though. Oh, really? 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 Oh, Right, we've got a whole selection of good stuff lined up for you. I've forgotten what we've queued up next. What have you? What was it? Your choice? Yeah, Marvin Gaye's Hitchhike. Right, we'll play a few records and then we'll get more into rap. We've got the new single, by the way, from Nazareth, which we'll be playing in a couple of tracks' time, so uh, total exclusive for Big L, and Nazareth are quite pleased about it as well. We've also got Dan McCavity's latest record, which nobody knows about. In fact, there's a bit of controversy whether we should be... Uh, we've got two tracks, we don't really, well it's nothing to do with me, it's their management, their band, and they don't know which one to release, so we may open the phone lines up later on and let you vote yourselves. Oh, fantastic. Well, see, see this one, this Marvin Gaye thing, we used to do this, what, seven, seven years ago? Well, that was before I was in the band, because I'm a lot younger than the rest of them, you know, but... Uh, we actually used to do this. No, thing. we did. You we know? did this. Like You've been going, what, since 68? As a 69? As Nazareth. As a professional. You used to be called the, uh, some of the oh, group. Oh, stop it. No, no, no. no. Oh, come on, I've got it in my book. Shed. Shed. I'll, I'll, I'll read it out to them. The Shadet. The Shadet. As in Shadows. Right, and both of you were in this band, and then, uh, and Sweet was with you as well. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. In 1971, you became Nazareth. Right. It's all in my little book. Oh, he's a cover of me. No, isn't he? Oh, he's a sharp guy. There well, you must, go. We must think up. I'll tell you what, while we're playing the next track, which is Hitchhike, I want you to decide between you which was the most amazing event you ever did. The most amazing most event. The Getting to Luxembourg. That would be the most <laughs> great. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was a similar one. Right now we've got Nathan Gay, and while this is playing, I've got to work out which was their craziest gig. Some headphones out, which turned out to be a disaster. Never mind, we'll get it together. The little plugs around the sides, and there's volume oh, control. Thank, thank you, you Chuck. <laughs> you can have it as loud as you like. Fantastic. While you're organising yourself, you, you wanted to play Hitchhike. I take it when you first started in about 19... Let me have a look at this book. 19... <laughs> <laughs> that was what you were into. You were into covering other people's... Yeah, well, yeah, we the thing it. is, Nazareth established 1876. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that You've been no. going a lot longer than I actually thought. I thought you were well, about the, a 1972 band, but... The, the guys in the band have been playing in, you know, different groups for a long time. We were always played in Scotland, and, and like at that time in Scotland, See, there was a lot of like a musical awareness. But I mean, that, I mean, when we got into stuff like Marvin Gaye singing Hitchhike, right. the, the only other choice you had was like Matt Winter, you know, like Matt Winter. That's well, right. Well, that's going way back which into the seventies. Which is like playing rotten if you're in a rock and roll band, you know. Mm -hmm. So we had to, you know, kind of chop down. According to my and, little book here, you both started shadows. You developed something violent, like Billy Fury. That was amazing. You know, I mean, it was like... But this was your first group, or were, were the group before this? This was the first group, this book, The Enemy Book of Rock, was the yeah, first well, band yeah. they really caught on to. Your actual shadets, kidda. <laughs> they, they started, uh, we started that band in, oh, 19... It was a skiffle group. It was. Really? Like skiffle was. group? We were 10 years old. That's 20, 20 years ago. Did you ever have a real job? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I only fight, I only... Well, we'll he was an architect, I was an engineer. So you did several years after school, skiffling oh, around and... Yeah. We won. Da, 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 da. Might I just say we won the five skiffle competition in 1958. Not that that means a lot. Not that means a lot. Anyway. You don't look forty. Not well. <laughs> I only feel it. It's the hormones, Jim. Is that right? He has eggs and hormones every morning. It's wonderful. It's I love the hormones, but I hate the eggs. Oh, Is that right? They, they were telling me just now that they hate hotels where. They have to eat with all the regular people and see all the sloppy bacon and egg going on. Oh, I mean, let's face it, you spend half your life doing shows like this yeah, in the middle of the night. Right. right. So everybody else gets up and they say, breakfast will be between 9 and 11. Right, so you go, oh, yeah. I have to get a call for half past 10. So you go down there at 11 o'clock in the morning and people are eating. It's all in there. It's all floating around. No, they're eating <laughs> solid things, you know, before 12 o'clock. Can't understand it's that. It's crazy. So you like to hide in your room and I like a quiet on quiet and a little bit of toast. A bit of quiet toast. We phone up about three and say, any chance of breakfast? And they go, 
You see, you can't count. Three hours ago, sir. That's the big problem when you do a gig and uh, they expect you to be out of the hotel by midday and you don't even wake up till one o'clock. Really? And you're here like, for another day. Whether you like it or not. Like most gigs you do, like obviously when you're on the road, like, it's most of the time like stage. Or even you, you know. And you arrive in the town, you do a sound check, you play your gig, but then the record company in the town, you know, have set up like interviews and you know people to meet like garden records stores and stuff. You know, garden sets. You know. I bet you get a bomb one of those. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all that. So, well, you get to bed at like four in the morning. Right. And usually, well, sometimes we even take alcohol. No, 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 no. no, no. Only seven ups and eight fags, but sometimes uh, I'll get sometimes. Home. You were going to tell me about Nuremberg. That's, that was the uh, place. That was the most amazing. It's part one and two. Right, you're, you're, uh, sure. Pete's going to take up part one. Well, I think part one. Okay. Part one's a killer. We went to Nuremberg with a band with Rory Gallagher. I'm sure everybody knows Rory. I heard Good friends of ours. Oh, yeah. And you know, Rory like dresses in you know the denim and the, and if he plays no, in the Sahara, numbers in that oh really? And if he plays in the Sahara Desert, we will attract five thousand people dressed in denim and plimsolls. Same as him, you know. I mean, the guy could fill a hall in Tibet. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, all blue. Come on, oh, right. right. hey, this is my part. Sorry, story. He's doing part one. So I'm part one. You're part two. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we get to Nuremberg, and at that time we just it was the first time we'd been out of Britain. Abroad. And Abroad. Oh, we're going abroad. We were packing sandwiches and flasks. So this is going to be great. You're running until you're going abroad. <laughs> That's Scottish. For, are you going abroad for your music? So we get there to Nuremberg, which we, in between, we'd played Wolverhampton the night before, driven to uh, Dover, Dover, slept on the pier, and drove to Nuremberg. And we think we're going to knock these German people dead. So we're the support band, right? And we just beat the Kensington Market, where everybody knows you get the flashy boots and all this, you know. With all the glitter stuff on. Ago, oh, we look like a right bunch of. Star in the high heels. Oh, <laughs> right, so right bunch of humdingers, yeah, you know? So, we, right this, up Christmas <laughs> the guy goes, ladies and gentlemen, Nazareth. So we, we go, put out the cigarettes, dead John Wayne, Humphrey Bogart, puts out the fags, steps out into the stage, and everybody goes, boo! <laughs> and we're going, dancing, <laughs> wait a minute, you've never heard us. Like, it's the first time we've been here. They yeah. just booed you in the name. Right. Just, oh, just because of what we look like. Oh, I we must have looked like a big bunch of faggots, you know, right? <laughs> so, that's a loud draw, I can't so, uh, so, that's a loud So, we got on the stage and they kept booing and whistling. We'd never been booed off before, which is not really a boast. It was like, <laughs> a, it was like a relief. So, uh, we, get, we get on the stage and they keep booing and whistling. So, after about six numbers and two broken guitar, guitar strings, we say, I don't know about you, but I've had enough. <laughs> so, we left the stage. So, our management and their infinite wisdom said about, oh, a year later. It was great. It was like, after that, we did like another part of two. Another part of two. Part two. Right. John McCavazine speaks. <laughs> yeah. After that, we did about another 52 gigs in Germany. It was and it went really well on every gig, right? So, we said, look, soon we go back to Germany. The only place we don't want to play is Nuremberg. What's, What's the, the first, first gig, gig on the next tour? Nuremberg! <laughs> <laughs> there, was, there was a happy ending. Oh, oh yes. No, so not this time. time. So eventually we're going, well, you know, you've got to prove yourself, right? So we're up there and they're all going, <laughs> 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 get off! A second time they're booing! Right, 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 and brilliant right. things are us. Like, I mean, lots of steel on the line. We're going, like, after every number, it'd be a great live view. We'd go, thank you! And you know, eventually, man, we did one acoustic number on the set, and by this time, these these kids are saying to themselves, "You guys got to be crazy." They're going out of that mission <laughs> anyway. Nothing else to throw at you. <laughs> Nothing else to throw, you know. And they're going, "You guys got to be crazy." So we did this acoustic number, and we thought, "I said to myself, oh, going to die," because it's like, "Won't you like Manny sitting playing acoustic guitar?" And we're just singing. Oh, quiet. Oh, oh, really? Oh, this is going to be real a disaster. And whenever we said, you know. I said, find an acoustic thing now called country. And if you keep booing, you won't hear it. <laughs> and it was amazing. Like, instant still quiet. And after that, they're all clapping things going, there all right. The next time we went there, we sold out two halls. Part three. We sold out two halls, and everybody's gone. I've always liked you this Nazareth. I'm always thinking that a good book. My older brother, he is there booing, but it's not me. You know. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So Nuremberg has some happy memories. Oh, yes. Yeah, Listen, yeah. we're going to play a track now called Your Violin, which comes from the new LP, which is all about rock and roll. Well, this is possibly, and I think, I think, most probably going to be the next. It's not a total well, guarantee, but it's it could be. Much. It's not at all, but I mean, well, <clears throat> we want it. We <laughs> want it out. The band wants it. The management aren't sure. It's entirely up to you. Give us a ring if you like it. Try a lead singer's album a little bit here. Good man. 